following podcast contains naughty words. Things you wouldn't want your kids or your parents to hear. But frankly, we, we don't, don't give it. Thank you for joining us again. This is Paul Wilson. And I'm Danny Voss. And we're here with the Diesel Performance Podcast. Coming at you today with some really cool topics, but as always, we want to get started by saying thank you for all of the social media interaction we've had. Uh, the YouTube comments, please keep them coming, guys. We try to stay interactive with them. Same as the Facebook private messages. We've been getting a lot of those lately, Danny. I know it, and we would like you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also our iTunes. Yeah, please subscribe and comment on the on the iTunes and uh, definitely subscribe to the Duramax Tuner YouTube channel, which is where you can find all of our podcasts loaded on YouTube. Uh, today's topic, you want to introduce it, Danny? We're talking tractor tuning. Tractor tuning. Who would have thought? Uh, we're also joined today by Nick Pregnitz. Happy to be here as always, fellas. Absolutely. Thank you for coming back. And we have a new special guest, Logan Eck. Hey, hey how's it going? <laughs> we're doing great, Logan. Uh, <laughs> thank you, gentlemen, both of you, for joining us today, Nick in person and Logan on the phone. Uh, the reason we brought you guys into the podcast when we started talking tractor tuning is Logan, you've tuned quite a few tractors here recently. Is that correct? Yeah, we've uh, we've tuned four of our deers, and then uh, we've just got one uh, case uh, quad track on our farm, a six hundred, and uh, we we run about oh about ten tractors total of the of the bigger tractors, and we've got a few little smaller ones. So yeah, that's what we're running. So that's awesome, man. I'm I'm really glad to hear it. You know, when we, Danny and I obviously have a lot of experience with tuning. When we talk tuning, I'm always thinking drag truck, pull truck, tow rig. I'm thinking about trucks. I'm thinking about Volkswagen cars. Tractor tuning is something that's new to me within the last few years. I would say five years ago, I had never heard of it. Tractor tuning is a, is a really cool niche, is a really cool little cutout in the tuning market. You know, the truck tuning, like you said, it, it makes you think about going fast. It makes you think about sled pulling. It makes you think about burning rubber, having fun, occasionally being an idiot, right? Yeah. You don't do that shit in a tractor, right? <laughs> right. That <laughs> costs too much. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't do it long because you get in trouble for it. <laughs> um, you know, the whole idea behind tractor tuning really comes down to the economy. You know, what's what's the best thing for the efficiency of the farmer and the farm? I mean, if there's one thing that I know... I don't know that much about farming, but I know a lot of farmers and I know that they're all about getting rid of bottlenecks and they're all about efficiency. And when some tractor that's underpowered is holding up the operation, man, they want to fix it. That's it. That makes a ton of sense. Logan, how about you? What got you first thinking about tuning a tractor? How did you come across that? Well, we, uh, we run an 8130 John Deere. Uh, we bought back in 09, we bought two of them and, uh, we just we run a potato digger behind it. And we're digging four rows at a time. We run row four into it, and sometimes you just get into some spots, and it's just uh, the tractor's in eighty one thirty, which is the lower part of that series, and it just you know it just didn't have enough room. So we uh, we purchased a, ch uh, a chip, which I don't know if I can tell the brand, but we bought a chip for it, and uh, we just it it worked for a while, and it just never worked, and it broke clothes tractors start smoking and everything and i found you guys and i just thought man let's just give these guys a try and i talked to chris and everything and you know he, you know i was just kind of first worried you know you know if we're going to upgrade this tractor you know it's just kind of a weary subject you know if i want to boost this thing up to an 85 30 you know am i going to start having stuff fail and he reinsured me you know hey this is everything's the same on this tractor you know if it was an 85 30 and I said, well, let's go with it. And we, uh, I tuned it, put it all up in 8530, and we couldn't really tell the difference, you know, pulling up and down the road with it, you know, getting the planter moved around for plant potatoes. And uh, my brother-in-law, Craig, he plants our potatoes, and he hopped in it. And as soon as he got a full load on that potato planter, planting eight rows at a time, he's like, hey, I can already tell the difference. And this was not very favorable planting for us and potato planting you just can't wait till it dries up sometimes you just gotta you know to ideal conditions you just gotta go do it and he said there were spots before that tractor would lug down you know and just kill itself and he said times now he goes this tractor's got so much more power it just it just pulled itself it just kept on digging so that's when i knew 
let's just keep on doing it some more of our tractors and see where we can get. That's awesome, man. And I think there's a few points in there that we want to dig into and kind of dissect here. I would say the first mm-hmm. is as you start to look at it, I, I don't mind uh, talking about what brands or what brands or what products you've used in the past. Really, what I'm most mm-hmm. interested though is what type of chip was it? Was it a resistor chip, or, or I, I guess if you tell us the brand, we can kind of work backwards from there. Yeah, it, it, it was a TNS performance okay. uh, chip. I, I'm guessing I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not exactly the best. You know, I'm not an extreme diesel mechanic, what you guys are, but I mean, it, uh, it it just plugged into the fuel pump there on the right side of the tractor, and that was it. And you know, you zip tied it somewhere where it wouldn't fall off or you know break <laughs> off, and that was pretty much it. I'm, I'm guessing it's the resistor. You know, I'm it's just telling it to put more fuel into the tractor. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So, so you had a resistor module that didn't really get the job done. Um, well, let's, say, it, let's dig into it a little more, Paul. I don't want to. Yeah. You know, please. Because it, Logan brings up a good point where he st- he started and he got a chip for this tractor and he didn't say he was worried about getting a chip for the tractor. Getting a chip for the tractor was a perfectly normal thing for him, right? So it's kind of interesting because this is the way the truck market started for us too. There was there was these. Uh, module type boxes that were on the trucks and nobody thought anything of it you buy a module type box you upgrade the power on the truck or get more power out of it um, and then custom tuning comes out and everybody's like oh shit i don't know i don't know about this this is some real <laughs> stuff here like you know you're talking about going to an 85 30 or an 85 20 like that's a that's a major step you know what i mean that's a especially when this chip is kind of like hit and miss you know right. like i'm you're having yeah. so so luck with this thing, and then we're telling you, we can promise you some serious, consistent gains here, and it it almost sounds too good to be true. And I think that's what a lot of a lot of farmers we talk to on a day to day basis. You know, that's kind of where we are in the marketplace right now. Is we almost sound too good to be true. Absolutely, absolutely. I'd say that's totally normal, and we do all remember the chips and stacking chips. Mm-hmm. Who here hasn't stacked a chip on a truck before? <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> like an edge and a bully dog. Like there was anything ever yeah. that ran better, How right? How could this go wrong? Yeah. Um, but but we did it, you know. And back then, I, I like that idea that we were we were just trying to get a little bit more. That's what everybody said, right? And then when mm-hmm. it came to custom tuning, I read a post the other day on Facebook where somebody said, uh. I wonder if Suncoast has ever sent a thank you letter to EFI Live for building them an empire. <laughs> <laughs> and, I did I, see that too. Yeah, right. And I think any of us who have who've put big tunes on our LB7s or old five speeds can really appreciate um, where that's coming from. But with custom tuning, at least that was my thought when it first rolled out was, is this going to be great? Is this going to be too much? You know, I, I guess it's yeah. it's like any tool. It depends on whose hands it's, it's in. It's your typical great power, great responsibility thing. I mean, mm-hmm. when we tell you we can get that kind of power out of the tractor, you're like, well, that sounds great. But, man, that, that, that if they do it wrong, that sounds like that could go really poorly. And it just depends on who you're working with, you know, and depends on what kind of uh, what kind of background and history and strategy they're using. Absolutely. And I think that also kind of drives me into the other point I wanted to dissect here. We're talking about an 8130, and we, we kind of smoothed over here of upgrading it to an 8530. Um, Nick, could you feel that a little bit and explain that a little bit more about what's going on there when we say we're upgrading it to a different series or to a different model? Yeah, I think Logan touched on that when you, you said Chris was talking to you and he kind of filled you in on what the difference was between your 8130 and, and like the 8330, the 8430. Is that about right, Logan? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it, what we usually coach a customer through is, you know, we, we talk about the transmission, we talk about the turbocharger, we talk about the fuel injection system, cooling capacity. You know, it, it's a 9-liter engine. And right. And that doesn't really hit home until you think a Duramax is 6.6 liters and it makes 300 and, you know, 97 horsepower on an LML. Well, Logan's talking about a tractor that's a 9-liter engine and it's 310 horsepower. So what gives man (laughs) where's the rest of the power right Um, and a lot of it has to do with you know a tractor is a rolling dyno cell the thing is under load all the time you know he's talking about his brother-in-law planting potatoes with it he's beating the shit out of it you know he's full throttle um it's it's running you know you don't run a truck like that usually so you run it you run a tractor like that and it's got to reject a lot of heat and so the cooling system has to be up to the task it's not that it's a the, the engine can't make the power Nine liter engines can make fifteen hundred horsepower. You know, it, it, they just can't get rid of the heat, especially when they're going five miles an hour or whatever he's planting at. Right. 
Okay. Okay. So, so when we're talking about upgrading it, it comes down to what hard parts are on the tractor. Is that right? That's a big part of it. So if they have the same components for cooling, for turbo, for injector, if they have all the same hard parts, the only difference between them is really the electronically controlled tuning. That's, that's a major, <laughs> that is the secret John Deere doesn't want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So Logan, so you, you have five tractors too now. Did I catch that correctly? Four deers in a case? Uh, let me think. Oh, I'm sorry. Three, three deers in a case. Three yeah. deers in a case. Okay. Uh, have you had any reliability issues? No. Uh, I mean, we've, this, I mean, we're ran out today, but I mean, we've ran pretty hard. I mean, that, that same tractor I talked to you about that we're playing potatoes with now we're hilling potatoes with it fertilized and, and then, uh, you know, we, I mean, if anything, we've seen something better. And I, you know, I don't know if that's something that you guys were involved with. It was one of our 94 third, one of our four wheel drives that we operated there with one of your guys' tunes. We, we've had issues with that, that 94 30 and, uh, with beer and everything. And, and, uh, but we always had an issue. It seemed like, I, and this is where I don't know if you guys had anything to do, you know, with the tune, but I mean, it, the tractor seemed like it wouldn't be primed when you let it sit for a while and you hop back in that tractor and start it up. You'd have to turn the key on and let it prime up, and then then it would finally fire. Well, now we can hop in this tractor, hop in the cab, turn the key, and it fires right up like it was brand new. So, I mean, it, I don't know if, you know, if that's something. I wish we could I'm take sure credit for that, Logan. <laughs> for yeah, I don't, I don't think that's uh... – you know, I wish we could take credit for that one, but I don't think it's something that uh, that the tuning but it, fixed. Necessarily. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's overall. I mean, it, it, I don't know. If it, it, it's a it's a totally different tractor now, and we're we're so dang happy with it. Yeah, and we've got a lot of stories like like Logan's. You know what I mean? And, we, and you know, he's um, he's tuned up with us just starting this season, right? So you've run through your planting season or into your planting season now. So it's not like you got tons of hours on your machines, uh, but we do have customers who've been running our tunes for two or three years, you know, over spring and harvest. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a no bullshit product, man. They, they run. There's a reason deer warranties them up to 360 horsepower. It's because they're triple free. That's awesome. I, I have a question for Nick. I can understand as a salesman personally that when somebody else buys a product, let's say a TS or Steiny or Steinbauer, and they already purchased this, they already invested their money into a product, how do you overcome that when you talk to a farmer? Yeah, that's a that's a big thing that we want to run into is, you know, especially guys in Logan's situation where they have a, a chip on the tractor previously or they've experienced that. And, you know, not all, not all uh, chips fail um, or not all have failed yet. Um, but, you know, there's a big difference between the chip market and the custom tuning market. And it can be summed up in pretty much one sentence. And that is, does the tractor know how much fuel it's injecting into the system? And anytime you put a module type box on a tractor, you're fooling the fuel system. You're fooling how much fuel the tractor is using and it simply doesn't know how much fuel it's using. Now that's, that's fine if you have a non-variable vein turbocharger and the tractor is not emissions equipped um, you feed more fuel. It's just like any diesel engine. You feed more fuel, you get more exhaust energy, you drive the turbocharger, the air comes, everybody's happy. You know, worst case scenario, your timing's not right. You, you know, runs a little bit hot, a little bit smoky. Great, it's a diesel. But you get on these newer tractors, these 8R series, you know, um, interim tier four, tier three, final tier four. I mean, you're talking about a delicate system. You're talking about a system that really wants to know what the air fuel ratio is in the engine. Um, and, not just for not just for engine performance, but I mean, you want to know what fuel you're injecting so you can calculate your fuel usage. You know, when you look at your data, you want to see what your what your uh, gallons per acre, what your fuel rate is, and these boxes aren't doing that. You know, I hear the on the advertising, you claim that for every acre, you can save up to a third of a gallon. If you do three thousand acres, you just saved a thousand gallons of fuel. How true is that? And we want we want you to see that. You know, and you know, the, the guys with the boxes, they're seeing false information on their heads up displays and they're saying, holy shit, am I saving fuel? Yeah. And are they saving fuel? Probably. Is it as good as their heads up display says? Absolutely not. Um, and also the long-term reliability of the tractor is suffering. Make no bones about it. It's suffering. Um, when you use our calibrations, the tractor knows exactly how much fuel it's using. 
and you look at your heads-up display and it says you're saving fuel, take it to the bank, man. You're saving fuel. It's a no-bullshit number. It's not sending out some fake report of fuel usage. The tractor knows what's going on, and it's operating exactly like it should. It's able to compensate with boost. It's able to compensate with timing, and it's able to use its emissions control system the way it should. So the power manager definitely brings a lot of value to different tractors. And Logan, I guess one of the things I I have to question you about, um, are you guys seeing a time saving? Like by having more power, are you upping the ground speed of your operation? Do you get in from the the end of your day sooner? Are you are you utilizing that extra ground speed? I guess is the question here. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we're just, I mean, you know, we're running a couple more miles an hour faster with what we're normally at before, and you know, we get in there, get it done, and move on to the next one. You know, the point you guys were talking about the fuel savings. I mean, it's I, I've seen it. I mean, you know, we're we're not using as much fuel. It's it's been that's just a big. I mean, a big thing, and we cover a lot of acres with our tractors, and you start getting in that saving a third of your fuel, I mean, that's a big, you know, 33% savings, that's a lot. I mean, we we go through a lot of fuel, and it's just, uh, you know, way, way things have been, you know, that's a that's a big thing, is, you know, saving as much fuel and trying to be as efficient as possible, I and mean, that's just the, that's the whole farming motto, I think, is yeah. just using what you got and trying to be efficient, you know. Yeah, they say the price of wheat is down, the price of corn is down, so you got to do everything you yeah. can to put some money in your pocket. Yeah, you got to you we got to do what we got to do. I mean, some of the markets have rebounded. I haven't really looked at them today, but I mean, they're not like what they were a couple of years ago when you had, you know, almost $8 corn and, you know, $13 beans. I mean, you know, you, it didn't really bother you, but you know, with the way the markets have been, I mean, exactly. you got to be smart pennies and try and save up what you got. Yeah. And I, I think it's You know, Logan talks about it like it's no big deal because he's a farmer, but some people who aren't really in the field every day don't, might not appreciate what two miles an hour means in a tractor. So Logan, can you tell us like, you know, let's say you're planting, uh, planting potatoes or running a piece of tillage equipment. Can you put it in perspective a little bit? What two miles an hour means with the tune? Like, where did you start and where are you now? Oh, I I mean, you know, I mean, working ground, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you're you're boosting up a couple, you know, acres, you know, quite a few more acres an hour, and you're just, that's less you're paying a guy to sit out in the tractor and. Yeah, and, I mean, what uh, would he be running you know, for a mile an hour before it, you're the You're getting two. it done, so you know the the planter behind it can get it done too, and the planter's not waiting behind the tractor, you know, waiting a half hour for the guy in the tillage tool to get it worked so he can get it planted. Okay. And you know, we had a such a wet wet spring, and like I said, you know, we just keeping the the potato planter going and getting it in the ground is a big thing. Absolutely. Okay. Are you saying that you guys went from like eight to 10 miles an hour before tune and after tune? Or are you guys saying you went from like six to eight? I, I guess I'm just kind of, kind of trying to find a, a number I could throw at an average maybe. Yeah. I, I'd say that on the till is part. I mean, you can go and go so fast, you know, while you're planting, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to get sloppy with your planter and everything and have skips and, everything like that but i mean yeah i'd say i'd say with our tillage tools you know you're boosting up from normally where you're going maybe seven eight you know when you're going up to you know nine ten you know with with tillage that's a that's a that's a big deal (laughs) that's awesome it is a big deal and i i think i think you phrased it really well is when you're out there in a planner you're not getting caught behind the guy running tillage there's a like you had said earlier nick there's a bottleneck that the tuning fix so i guess it does make a lot of sense just in an operational standpoint Get yeah. these things moving. Get them down the road, and then everything else kind of starts to become icing on the cake, right? Uh, you're using less fuel. You're making more power. You're running more efficiently. You're out of the field quicker. You're paying farmhands less. You're downshifting less. You're working your machine. You know what I mean? Your your machine's running less RPM. It's uh, yeah, like you said, it's icing on the cake. Okay. So okay. what do you do with all your extra time and money now? I just <laughs> want to know. Me. Yeah. <laughs> We go, we go find something else to do. <laughs> <laughs> What's the price of beer these days? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I do want to say uh, thank you very much for coming in uh, for the podcast, Nick. Thank you very much for joining us today, Logan. We appreciate no problem. Yeah, we appreciate you guys getting with us today and uh, having a great topic to talk about because this is definitely something that a lot of people are going to be listening to and they're going to have further questions. So if you have any further questions, feel free to call Calibrated and talk to one of the guys. They'd be glad to talk to you. Absolutely. And before we take off too quick here, uh, I just, I'm going to ask you guys both uh, 
Is there something that we should have asked or is there something we should have talked about today that we skipped over? So Logan, we'll start with you. Is there anything you would like to tell people about tractor tuning in general? Oh, uh, first thing, I mean, what I was concerned about, don't feel worried about it. It was, it was, you know, it was kind of a little weary of a thing, but that's just something to get over. Um, it's just been a great, great thing we've done. Uh, you know, one thing I know you guys, we didn't touch base about was our reduce on death on our case tractor. That's a big thing. You know, it's just, uh, just another way to become more efficient and we've just uh just couldn't be any happier with it great great i appreciate that logan i mean the the thing that i would add would be um if you're if you're interested in doing this you know you need to identify kind of how what kind of candidate you are and the the best tractors to operate are those tractors that are lower in the series right the 8130 the 8245r the 9410 um the 9230, you know, all those, and, and sorry, I'm just kind of lingering on deer because Logan's got me stuck on deer right now, <laughs> but we also tune case in, in New Holland. So there's, you can imagine the similar tractors for that. Um, so, you know, if you're lower in the series, even better for you. Not that we can't go over the top of the series, but like Logan's Steiger 600, we can't get carried away with that model because, you know, we don't, we want to play it safe. Safety is a big thing. We want to make sure that we keep the tractor safe. You know, they're expensive machines and you don't want to be loose with them. Um, the other thing that I would say is that, you know, with tuning, you can go back to stock. So there's always going to be that one comment on the thread or wherever that says, oh, but you just voided your warranty. Always. Like, aren't they only a year warranty for John Deere anyways? You can buy extended. It, it depends. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. And, you know, the, the thing is, did tuning the tractor cause the failure? And, you know, our strategy behind tuning <laughs> is that we... You know, you heard the whole thing. We, we stick within the series. We play it safe. Um, odds that you're going to hurt the tractor because of tuning, very low. Again, you can go back to stock. Someone's going to have to look to see if the tractor was tuned, and that's only possible on the newer tractors. So if you're out of warranty, you know, it doesn't matter anyway, but if you're in warranty, you know, something you want to you consider. Is, is it worth the risk to me? Um, if it means trading that 9410 off for a 9510, and you're going to have to eat thirty or forty thousand dollars. Right, might not be a big deal for you. You know, what I mean, I can tell you, I can tell you straight faced. I don't think we're going to cause a problem on your tractor for the next five years. I think you're going to be just fine. Right, but you know, it's a risk, and that's a huge deal for farmers if they're going to go out and buy something and they realize they can buy something in the beginning of the series or the middle of the series. They got to be kissing you on all four cheeks at the end of the day when they realize what you can do. <laughs> and Danny's one liner made it in the episode. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a, better than last week's. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, like it. I like it. I like it. I have to bust something out. I can't go a whole episode without saying well, something. I'll, yeah. I'll one, without a one liner. Right. That'd be crazy talk. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I do want to say again thank you, Nick. Thank you, Logan. My pleasure, man. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Not a problem. You guys are always welcome to stop by and check us out if you ever want to. We're, we're just a stone throw, stone throw away, I guess. So you're more than welcome to stop by and we can be more than happy to show you our operation. I dig it. I'll drink your beer and eat your steak. That's what I'm good for. <laughs> you are. Get the right? potatoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was implied. All right, guys. This has been Paul Wilson. And I'm Danny Voss. Thanks for listening. The Diesel Performance Podcast is brought to you by Calibrated Power Solutions, home of DuramaxTuner.com, developer of performance engine and transmission calibrations for a wide variety of late model diesel powertrains, including the Duramax, Cummins, John Deere, Jeep, and many more. For more information and the best customer service in the industry, check out CalibratedPower.com or call 815-568-7920. So what do you do with all your extra time and money now? I just want to know. Yeah. We go, we go find something else to do. <laughs> <laughs>